This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Chapter 15 deals with corporate failure, or in particular, trying to predict corporate failure. Now we'll come on to two models that are on the syllabus, a quantitative and a qualitative model. But I think this syllabus would also expect you to look at common sense signs of potential difficulties for the company in survival. And what I put in the, the first slide here is really headings which I use in F8 and auditing and insurance when one is looking at going concern issues in a company. Because corporate failure is essentially like a going concern issue. So if you see negative operating cash flows, negative cash, negative cash, negative cash, uh, then this is usually the quick death of an organization. Inability to pay suppliers when due, the uh, payments period increasing, uh, is often taken as a bad sign. People try to put off paying suppliers because they don't have the money. And certainly suppliers are very sensitive to any additional credit being taken by their customers. Operating losses. If running out of cash is the quick death, operating losses tends to be the slow death. For some time, uh, maybe uh, shareholders are asked to contribute more money. Uh, they, they, they try and get maybe partners to put in more money or a bank to lend money and so on. But, but ultimately, if the company keeps making loss after loss after loss, no one is going to lend any more money because they don't see any way they're going to get that back. Borrowing facilities not agreed. Uh, you have to repay the benches in six months, but the bank is, or re repay a bank loan, but the bank manager is kind of hiding from you, not returning calls, being very cagey about whether or not the uh, loan facility is going to be renewed. Loss of uh, key staff and key customers, very important. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, key staff now have very, very precious information that's kind of locked in their their heads, know-how, design skills, and, and so on, and they and even and even information about customers. And if they leave, you might be left with uh, very little in the cupboard to help you carry on. This is why knowledge management that we mentioned earlier was quite important. Similarly, a loss of a key customer, a customer to whom you sell maybe sixty percent of your output. It's pure Porter's five forces, really. Uh, can leave you with uh, seriously embarrassed cash flow. Technology changes. Some organizations simply find what they used to do and what they were quite good at, people don't need anymore. Kodak was an example of this. Kodak was once a world-leading company in the production of color film. Then along come digital cameras. Nobody needed this unique and very good product of Kodak. Uh, and Kodak you know, to all intents and purposes, went into administration. Little bits and pieces have maybe been rescued. Legislative changes can make it very difficult or even illegal uh, to operate. Uh, in the UK, we had legislative changes recently on pension regulations, and some companies which specialise in arranging pensions essentially went out of business because their specialist skills were really no longer required. And then there's non-compliance with uh, regulations. Non-compliance with regulations can lead you to very big fines, which might be crippling, or it could lead you to losing a license to trade or the right to trade, which is also likely to be very uh, serious. Remember to, uh, again, look at uh, stuff like uh, gearing. It's a very high gearing ratio or very low interest cover ratio is going to be uh, worrying. If you can't pay the interest, then the bank's going to get uh, very worried, probably come in and try and recover its uh, loan and so on. Uh, there is a liquidity ratio as well. So some of the ratios we looked at will give an indication uh, of either you know, imminent problems maybe with liquidity and maybe slightly longer problems perhaps with gearing. Okay, the first uh, corporate failure model is a quantitative uh, approach, sometimes called the Altman Z score. 
And it has to be said that this was devised many years ago and it was devised purely to do with the financial banking industry. And the economy now is very different to what it was all those years ago. Uh, and almost certainly it has to be questioned to what extent these weighting factors or coefficients are still valid. So it's saying here that uh, the lower the score, the worse. Okay, We have a, quite a big kind of a no man's land in here where we're not very sure. But if you're much below 1.8, then it's saying you are in some imminent danger. So this is like saying, if you look at X1, uh, that your working capital over total assets is low. You've got a small amount of working capital compared to other assets. X2, uh, retained earnings over total assets. So we don't, in a way, have very much equity in there. Retained earnings uh, lead into equity. Total assets will be matching equity plus long-term liabilities. X3, earnings before tax and interest over total assets. Essentially, a, a low return on capital employed is uh, what X3 is. X4, market value of equity over the total liabilities. It's a, it's a kind of kind of a gearing rate, upside down gearing ratio, really. If your liability is very high and your equity is very low, it implies a kind of high gearing. And finally, sales over total assets being quite low. This is the asset turnover ratio, really. Uh, and it means that you are not generating very many dollars worth of sales per dollar of asset. You uh, do not have to remember this formula. You certainly don't have to remember any of these coefficients in here. Um, Any time that this has come up in the past, it has been uh, given to you, explained to you. And all you really have to do is to, to put some numbers in or maybe the numbers already put in, and you have to explain really what the rationale behind the the model is. The non-quantitative or qualitative method is Argenti. Uh, and in many ways, I, I, I quite prefer this. There are uh, defects here, there are mistakes, and there are symptoms, as they're called. So let's look at the, the defects uh, here. And what we're looking for here is a high score is bad. Okay, so a score over 25 uh, is bad, as is a score above the pass mark uh, in uh, the first two individual sections. So here the pass mark is 10. So we're saying if we score above 10, just in this section alone, uh, then there's some cause for concern. So the, let's look at the first two. The chief executive is autocratic and there's also the chairman. There's no one to stop this person doing what they want, taking a risk really, uh, thinking they're bound to be right, pushing through risky um, uh, types of decisions. Very high risk kind of strategy. A passive board. A passive board who does not stand up and challenge somebody's uh, decisions. It's also bad news poor skills on the board so that there's maybe not a proper finance director, uh, not a proper marketing director. Uh, if you have these poor skills, then it's going to bump up the score just a little bit. Going further on down, uh, interesting seeing this one, a poor response to change here. Uh, almost called strategic drift. We're doing one thing, the environment is doing another thing. We're getting further and further apart. We're not responding maybe to the way people like to trade over the internet. We're not responding perhaps to the way people are buying uh, films, music and so on. Very much uh, uh, downloaded rather than perhaps going out and buying CDs. Uh, the way we're going to be buying books. And companies which are slow to respond to that uh, will find themselves left behind by technology and by market tastes and are almost certainly doomed. Next, uh, mistakes, uh, high gearing. High gearing more or less gets you into big trouble uh, to start with, as does overtrading. Overtrading, trying to do too much with too little permanent capital. we living from hand to mouth uh, and nearly always bumping up against your overdraft limit. Uh, always worried about how you're going to pay the wages. Uh, that's, uh, that's really quite a bad sign. Too much reliance on one big project that might go wrong. Again, a bad sign. Uh, if it goes wrong, then you've invested a lot of money in it. If a lot of your cash flows are dependent on that, 
you're going to be in considerable problems. And then symptoms. Uh, interesting one here saying uh, creative accounting, uh, changing your depreciation policy, changing the way you recognize income is a sign really of a desperate board, perhaps. So a score of over 25 or individual scores above 10 or 15 in either of the first two sections. And finally, here we have uh, a, a, an example of 10 commandments that uh, maybe a company trying to avoid failure uh, should try to comply with. You need a strategy, because if you don't have a strategy, you're, you're, you're really not planning very well. Uh, you must have proper controls, internal controls, controls over hiring people, controls over capital expenditure and so on. The board, as a board, must participate. You must get a good spread of input, good spread of skills. Avoid this autocratic one-man rule, autocratic chief executive of also the chairman. Uh, you want a depth of management. You want to embrace and follow change as best you can. Keep an eye on what the customer wants. The customer is, to some extent, always right here. Careful with computers. Uh, a lot is at risk of computers if uh, hackers get in or if you uh, have a systems breakdown in some cases where you can't trade anymore. Don't manipulate accounts. And pay heed to your employees. Your employees often know as much about the business in its detail as the people on the board. And finally, here we have suitable questions for chapter 15.